Hey guys, my name is Jason with Mount Baker Mining and Metals, and on today's video, I wanted to do a little bit of a follow-up. Uh, a couple weeks ago, I made a video where I went up in the hills and prospected on a quartz vein, and I have uh, the sample here behind me of the quartz that I ended up getting. And so on today's video, I'm going to crush this stuff up, see if we can find any good gold samples in it. And then also pan it down or uh, maybe run to the shaker table to get the gold out and figure out how much uh, gold we have in, in this sample. So we're going to do kind of an ounces per ton uh, calculation on it. And if you guys are coming in the middle here, I'll put a link uh, to the previous video in the description as well as up here in the corner of this video. So check that out first if you haven't. If you guys have seen that one already, let's get going on this one and we'll figure out how much gold we got in our rocks. So the first thing we got to do here is I got our ore in the bucket and we're going to take a weight on it. The blue bucket weighs two pounds, so we have 26 pounds of ore to start with. So next thing we're going to do is we're going to run them down this little four inch by six inch laboratory jaw crusher. It's going to crush down and go in this uh, drawer here. It crushes down to about, I don't know, a quarter inch, three eighths minus. And so uh, I know there's a lot of free gold in here and a lot of some, some really nice maybe specimen stuff. So I'm going to crush it into the drawer, spread it out on the table, and see if we can find anything uh, that's, that's really good high-grade stuff that we can take out as samples. And then the rest we'll deal with some other way. Alright, so now what I want to do is I'm just going to screen him through a quarter inch screen. I don't want to get all the dust and all the junk out of it. That's something else. There, now we, now we can have our nice clean quartz. We can kind of pick through on the table and get a look at it. Okay, so there's the stuff we're going to pick through, and there's kind of the fine stuff we'll just crush up and run through our table or a pan or something. So let's see if we can find any gold in this stuff. All right, let's see if this works. Now in that other video I had some pretty nice specimens. And they all went through the crusher. So all the gold that I found up there, all those pieces, are in here somewhere. Boy, this is kind of daunting here. It's kind of like a three-dimensional puzzle. I want to look at all the sides, but I got a lot of volume to look through here. So I'm going to just kind of pick through this stuff and see if I can find any any gold sticking on the faces of any of these pieces. All right, well this is this is pretty encouraging. Let's see if I can get this in focus. This is like the tenth rock I picked up and right there there's a little piece of gold sticking out of the corner of it so hopefully I can find more of that stuff alright guys I've hand picked through some of this stuff, well most of it I haven't gone through every single piece uh, but I've been spreading it out, I've been looking at it, and I didn't really know 
what to expect, but I'm disappointed there's not more visible gold in here. When I was up there on the hill and, you know, breaking open rocks, and I was figuring, you know, a rock this big that had a little bit of gold in the corner, there, there would be a lot more inside that rock. And so once I broke it down to, to this, the smaller size and had a lot more surface area to look at, I'd see a lot more gold. And that's really just not the case. I picked out a few little rocks here that have some gold on them. But I was hoping to get, you know, some big pieces, some nice specimen pieces of gold out of here, uh, which I didn't. So um, I'll show you what I got here as our little specimens. And then I'm going to take this over to one of our uh, fine grinding vibrating tube mills. We'll crush it down to powder and then uh, I'll pan it out and see actually how much gold is in here. And then we can do kind of an ounces per ton analysis of it. So here's a few pieces I did find. There's some gold there. A little bit of gold there, a little bit of gold on that corner. Some of it's hanging around with this this gray uh, mineral here, and some of it's just sticking out of the white quartz, like like that piece. And you know, this is this is probably the best piece I found as far as size. Um, but you can see, I mean, that just the huge volume of rock I have, and I, it's just you know, I was hoping for for a little bit better. Um, but let's get this over and we'll crush it up and see what we can pan out of it. So one thing I just was thinking about while I was getting ready to pack the coarser stuff up is there may be some gold or a lot of gold that actually broke out of the rock when I crushed it and is in this fine stuff. This is the quarter inch minus stuff. Um, so, I mean, you know, obviously some may have gotten knocked out of here, but but not all of it. There's still, if this rock was really, really rich, you'd expect to see quite a bit of gold in the rocks um, in the coarser stuff. So anyway, just, ho just hoping against hope that I can get uh, a little more gold than what I see in the rocks there. One other thing I did forget to mention here, um, I took one piece that had some visible gold in it, and I sent it off to a friend of mine that has a rock saw. And so when I get that piece back from him, uh, hopefully it'll be cut up into slabs and we'll see some uh, some VG, some visible gold and that stuff. Um, so when I get that back, I'll, I'll put a shot of that in. Um, but right now we're headed over to grind that stuff up and pan it out. Here's a piece that I took to one of my friends with a rock saw. And this is one of the higher grade pieces that I had. But if I think I can get this, if I if I get it just right in the light, you can see all the gold. See those little specks of gold? Or maybe it's better to do it like this. But all that all that reflective stuff you're seeing there is all little pieces of gold. See it there? So the stuff's really high grade, but the gold is so fine. I mean, a lot of it's real small. But let's keep uh, working on our stuff. We'll see how much we got in our 26 pounds. Here is our little vibrating tube mill we're gonna use. And this is just literally a steel tube that's, I don't know, about three feet long, maybe one foot wide. You can see the inside of it there. And these are the steel balls we use. And so what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna get the steel balls loaded into this chamber, and then I'll close this plate. I'll add the ore in down the top here and turn it on and just let it go. This, this one right now is set up as a closed system, so I'm just gonna turn it on. It's gonna shake for a while, and then I'll, I'll clean it all out. Uh, here's our material I'm gonna run. I'm gonna keep it dry and I'm not gonna add any water because I found that it's a lot easier to clean out when the material is dry for these batch, this batch system I got it set up for now. We have tried it with rods uh, in the past, but we found that the balls actually work a little bit better. And here is an example of like a screen that you can put over the end and the material will crush. And then uh, once it gets as small as that screen, it'll come out of the mill. But let me get some of these balls in here and then I'll take a video of what it looks like with the, the charge loaded up and we'll start it up. 
So there's our charge of balls loaded in there. And when I put the cover on, it'll come up to about halfway, a little under a half maybe. Um, but there's that. Now I gotta get our ore in there. And there's been a lot of interest in these lately, these little vibrating tube mills, because it sounds like they're pretty efficient. Uh, they don't take as nearly as much power as a ball mill. And what I'm gonna do eventually, or start playing with, is when I when I get a charge in there and go on, I can I can trickle a little bit of water down in there. And I don't know exactly how much, but I would flow the water down through, and I got an end plate kind of ready for it. I'd turn this, I don't know, half or a third or wherever, and as the water flows through, it would flow the fine stuff out. And so you add water and coarse material in here constantly, and it's constantly flowing out the back side onto a shaking table uh, or down a sluice box or something. But this might be a really nice way to finely crush material with low energy and without a ball mill. So let's throw our, our uh, ore in there, turn it on, see what happens. It's been half an hour, and I'm just going to take the end off and we can take a look and see how much we got crushed here. Here's a look inside, and it looks like all the materials in the back there, it may have shifted, it may be tipping down downhill that way and it all runs down to that end. But I'll pull some out and we'll see what it looks like. Here's what this stuff looks like. It's kind of interesting, it's, a lot of it's really, really fine, and then there's like some big rocks in there. There's a few little pebbles, but yeah, it's like it crushes a lot of it to super fine and then it leaves some bigger stuff. So I'll let it run. Like I said, it's been running about half an hour. I'll let it run another half an hour and we'll check on it again. Okay guys, it's been a little bit over an hour and now all the materials on this side. So I don't, <laughs> I don't know, I don't know why it migrates back and forth in the middle like that, but um, it's, it's over here now, uh, so I'm going to start picking out these balls, and I got a little bucket here, so we can, we can gather all the material in the bucket, and, uh, take it over and pan it, see what we got. Okay, I got all the balls out. There's still quite a bit of material kind of stuck on the sides here, so I'm going to turn the mill back on, and see if I can vibrate some of that all loose. Uh... But I have noticed that it's, it just gets caked on here on the sides. And I'll be interested to see, this is just a, a mild steel tube. And I want to know if there's a bunch of steel filings in the, in the fine stuff that we crushed. Or if the, the, uh, the ore makes kind of a padding on the, on the inside here and protects the steel from getting eroded. Uh, the other thing here is this stuff is really funny. It's, it's, 
it's super, super finely powdered, and then a big rock. And there's no, there's no sand or anything. It's just like, there's a bunch of super, super talcum powder stuff, and then like big rocks in there. So I don't really know how that happens if the, if there's a little bit of the ore that got, you know, kind of like hidden in the bottom or over on the side or up against the end plate and didn't get crushed, but there's definitely some bigger stuff. So I'll have to go back and screen that stuff out, maybe through like an eighth inch or a 20 mesh screen or something. Um, but let me turn this thing back on and see if I can vibrate the rest of that stuff off the walls and get it scraped into that bucket. Alright guys, we got our stuff back here to the other shop. I'm just going to do a quick and dirty pan on this stuff and see what we can get out of it. And then we'll run the tailings, my panning tailings, over on the shaker table. Hopefully once it starts, stops raining. And uh, we'll see what we can get out of the panning tailings. There's some nice gold. I want to see if that black stuff is magnetic. But we started with 26. I probably ended up only crushing about 15 or maybe 20 pounds worth of stuff. So that's gold from 20 pounds worth of ore. Not too bad. Let's see if that stuff's magnetic here. Here, we're going to use our old magnet in the bag trick here. There's some steel there, but I mean, I ran all those balls and I ran that vibrating mill for over an hour. And that's, that's really not very much steel or magnetics coming off of there. There's a really nice little shiny piece of gold there. So that's pretty nice. All right, well now what I want to do is take our panning tailings and run them on this 4x8 shaker table that we make. See if I can scavenge any gold from my panning tailings. And I'll be the first to admit that wasn't really very good effort on my part to pan that out. So I wouldn't be surprised if there's quite a bit of gold left in here, percentage wise. But I had it here. I thought you guys might not like to see one of our shaker tables run. And so we'll come out here and run our sample. And we make these and sell these. And so if you're interested in a shaker table or really any other mining equipment, check out our website. It's got prices and stuff and we got a bunch of videos on there about how it works. So you can see here there's a little bit at the end of the grooves coming up this long groove. If we had more material it'd keep, keep working its way along and the gold would work its way up out this long groove down under the water bar and down into the this is where the number one and the number two concentrates are but I want to get out of the rain so I'm just going to brush this down and get it in one of those cups and then we'll pan it out okay just to cover all our bases here there's the little bit of rock that uh, stayed as gravel I'm going to run it down through this little disc mill here and that'll help crush it down finer. Uh, I've never done it damp before. I mean, that gravel's kind of wet. I hope it 
there, it crushes it down fine enough and makes enough dust that it can go through. Um, but we'll see what happens. Let's give it a try. You can see how this works. One disc is stationary, the other one spins. The other one spins and the stuff is fed in the middle and out the edges. But man, that was kind of torturous. We got our stuff crushed. Oh man, it's just... <laughs> It's one of those days where you're just fighting everything, the weather, the machines, the ore, all the stuff. But by God, we're going to we're gonna get through this. We're going to get through this together. So I've got the last of our ore. Got it crushed through that disc mill. So now i got to pan this out. i got mud all over my face. I'm going to pan this out. See how much gold's in here. We'll combine all our gold together. And then we'll melt it down into a button, get it weighed. We'll figure out how much gold we got out of that 26 pounds of ore. This might be the sloppiest sample I've ever done. But we're still going to go through and we're going to get a number at the end. All right, guys. Well, I panned down the stuff that went through that little disc mill. And a couple exciting things here. Here's a piece. Pretty nice little piece there. And it, uh, it went through the disc, so it's super flat. Um, another couple pieces there that are pretty good looking, but here's a few that are kind of interesting. It rolled them up into a little ball. And so those are kind of like little nuggets. There's a few of those around, one there, one there. But, uh, man, what I really wanted was to find something like that. In the rock, that would have been a really nice specimen. I mean, it's been flattened out now, obviously, but that would have been a really nice little piece of gold to find sticking out of the quartz and even these little balls that got rolled up. Um, but now I'll, I'll combine all our gold together and we'll get it all sucked out and I'll show you how I'm going to melt it down into a one single bead. Okay, so I'm going to take this little snuffer bottle. I'm going to suck out as much of the gold as I can get, I'm trying to keep it more or less clean. And then I can just pan it back down again. Look at those. Look at those pickers out of there. Now I take just a a blue shop towel here. I'm going to take out my straw. Cap the end with my finger. I'm going to move you back here a little bit so you can see better. Shake all that gold down to the tip of the snuffer bottle. And then leak it down into the bottom of that. Get it down to the bottom of that shop towel. And you just do that a couple times. Get all the gold out of there. There we go. Take your shop rag. Squeeze all the water out of it as best you can. And then we'll go put it in our cupelling furnace. So this here is a chunk of bismuth. I've got a little bit of fines down there. I'm going to take some bismuth and put it in with our shop towel and our gold. And that's going to alloy with all of our gold in there. 
and make a puddle. Yeah, let's not get too carried away here. So I'm going to add some bismuth in there, a couple pieces, maybe 10 or 20 grams. That'll alloy with our gold. And in our furnace, because bismuth is not a precious metal, we're going to get it up real hot and it's going to start oxidizing. And once the bismuth metal turns to bismuth oxide on the top of the little button we're going to make, a little bead we're going to make in there, the bismuth oxide will be absorbed by the cupel. This is a cupel. The bismuth oxide is going to get sucked into here, and all the precious metals, the gold and the silver, aren't, they won't be absorbed into the cupel, so they'll stay as a little gold button on the surface. And uh, when the whole process is done, the gold button will be sitting there solid in the cupel, and the cupel will have turned kind of a dark gray or dark brown color from all the oxides. Right now we're burning off the rag there, all the carbon. And pretty soon we should see some silver liquid pouring out of the bottom of that rag. There it comes. That'll be the bismuth. And that's going to alloy with all the precious metals in there. The gold primarily is what we have. We'll check back on it in a couple of minutes. And all that rag will have burned off. And we'll have a nice silvery puddle in there. It's forming oxides on top that are being absorbed into the cupel. All right, let's take a quick peek at our gold and bismuth in here. So there's the puddle. The rag's been totally burned off. Now that puddle's oxidizing away, leaving the gold behind. So we'll check on it in a little while. Should have a nice pretty gold bead in there. All right, guys, let's check on our bead here. It's been in about half an hour, so it should be done. Yep, there it is. There we go. Get her cooled off a little bit of water here. And there's our gold bead. Let's get a weight on her, see what she weighs. All right, there's our bead. It weighs 0.73 grams. So let's do some math. We'll figure out how many grams per ton that is. All right, so if you take our original 26 pounds that I hiked out, divide that by 2,000 pounds in a ton, that's how many tons you get. You take 0.73 grams, divide it by our tons, comes out to be about 56 grams per ton. So a little less than two ounces a ton, which is awesome. All right, guys, well, thanks for watching our video. Hope you guys enjoyed it. Uh, it's always fun to run a sample like that and see how much gold we got in our ore. So if you have any questions or comments, you can find our contact information in the description below. So thanks for watching, and we'll see you on the next one.